I didn't hear you come in. And welcome back to Anti-Conjurer Storytime with me, shock illusionist Dan Sperry, the Anti-Conjurer. This week, we're reading a book that was submitted by one of you. That's right, if you guys are authors and have written your own children's books that you would like me to read as part of Anti-Conjurer Storytime, just hit me up, info at dansperry.com. This week, this book was submitted by Teresa Hine. She wrote this book called Yellow Socks for Purple Monsters. In the description below, you can find out information how you can get your own copy of this so that you can read it to your friends and family and kids, grandkids, niece, nephews, whatever. I don't know. I have a kid thing that I'm dealing with right now, but his parents haven't called back with the ransom, so what? Let's get into it. Yellow Socks for Purple Monsters by Teresa Hine. <clears throat> Wait, we don't start here. We start over here. I'm confused already. While one little boy drifted slowly to sleep, wary and silent, a monster did creep. Climbing the ladder that led to the ceiling, he knew it was wrong, but he just had a feel. What the fuck? Climbing the ladder that led to the ceiling, he knew it was wrong, but he just had a feeling. In his trousers. He opened the door with a heart full of dread. A soft, fuzzy something fell on his head. His bright red eyes opened as wide as could be. His voice, loud yet shaking, yelled, Mommy, Mommy, come look. Oh, come see. And there's the soft something. It was a sock. A yellow sock. <gasps> Foreshadow, perhaps? His mommy rushed in and sat close to her child who trembled and shook. Frightened and wild. She looked where he pointed and started to grin when she saw what he had. When she saw what he had held that was yellow and thin. It's just a sock, dear, from the humans above. Relax now, my darling. You know you're safe and you're loved. And there's the poor little purple monster cowering next to his mom. Uh, she's telling him about the humans above ground. So I think essentially this book is a metaphor for the reptilians that have been uh, living beneath our streets and beneath the ground. Maybe not just the reptilians, supposedly there's some greys and all that, uh, you know. Just look up, uh, what's his name, that Schneider guy on YouTube. Him talking about, you know, the Dulcie facility and his work, digging holes for the government and subterranean things and the encounters he had and then uh, Paul Schneider. Anyways, let's get, get on with this story. Nothing can hurt you as long as you listen. When she closed the door tightly with a flick of her wrist, she said in a voice that was gentle yet strong, we will always be safe in the world we belong. So she uses her little magic finger, bzz, zap, bing, bang, boom, and everything's safe in the little weird subterranean world they live in. She tucked him in tight, her touch soothing and light, but he stared at that sock all through the night. A little boy lay still awake in his bed, visions of monsters filling his head. When from under his bed, a quick flash of light that went out just as quick as a thump in the night, on trembling legs he fell to the floor and that's when he saw the square little door. This is totally little monsters. He saw just one sock where once there were two. With a sly little grin, he knew just what to do. Just one yellow sock placed at just the right angle. So if the door opens, that sock would then dangle. So now he's setting booby traps. Very smart, very hardy boys. Not the wrestling tag team, but those guys were pretty smart too when they set traps as well. On sturdier legs, he climbed back into bed. Visions of monsters returned to his head. To a soft scratching sound, he was quick to awaken. With a grin of delight, he saw the sock had been taken. Leaning over the bed, his head slightly under, his heart filled with hope and his eyes filled with wonder. Calling out in a voice that was loud with delight for his mother to come and see this sight. She ran in quick to the side of his bed looking down to the floor and then she said, my child, my boy, it's not as it seems. The monster you saw was just in your dreams or sleep paralysis, you know. So lie down in your bed and close your eyes tight. No monsters will come to cause you a fright. The sun will soon rise and I promise you'll see and all will be fine and right as can be. Is it weird now I'm noticing that the mother is wearing purple and the monsters are purple? Is there something going on behind the scenes here? Is she really a bad mom? Is she not really his mom? Maybe she's like a Miss Hannigan sort of thing. Anyway, the small little monster opened his hand to a bright yellow sock with a brilliant orange band. He tried not to giggle as he held it up high. A second prize had been taken, he thought. Then he sighed. He wondered who owned it, who lived past that door. He grinned as he thought, a new world to explore. 
He settled back down in his bed to sleep. That bright pair of socks was now his to keep. Basically, this is, uh, he's got bunk socks. If you've ever been on tour, you know what a bunk sock is. Early morning, the monster arose to see his mother in quite an angry pose. She held up his eyes hard in her hand. She could tell right away she didn't, he could tell right away she didn't understand. What did I tell you about going above? The things that I tell you are all said with love. In the back of my hand. The humans see nothing but a monster in you. But what you must know is that they're monsters too. I like where this is going. This is very Muppet Babies. I like this. Like Nana's, you know, legs or something. They could catch you and take you to places unknown. They would test you and poke you. You'd never come home. What would I do if I lost my child because he did something so foolish and wild? Don't let me catch you again by that door or I will make sure it's not there anymore. Well, what the hell is it doing there in the first place? Remember my words, son, all of them true. To them, you're a monster, but they're monsters too. Very good message. With a frustrated sigh, she turned away. He knew then and there there was nothing to say. His hard-earned prize was woefully lost. He had to get more, no matter the cost. Well, now this just sounds like drug addiction. For the rest of the day, he was a good little boy. Mom didn't know it was all just a ploy. For he wondered and dreamed, plotted and schemed how to get through that door to the land he had seen. Later that night, the house was now still, a monster, a human, each fought the thrill. Go up or go down to a world so unknown, go up or go down to a world not their own. The monster kept staring up at the door with a hunger like nothing he'd felt before. The human lay down and stared at his floor, wondering if he could open that door. Just as the monster had built up the strength, his mother came in and looked at him at length. She moved over to him and tucked him in tight, telling him gently to do what was right. Don't ever try to go through that door to the world up above you want to explore. With a sigh of defeat, he knew it was lost. Tomorrow he'd make it, no matter the cost. He should pull a Ferris Bueller. The boy lay on his tummy upon the cold floor, one hand inching closer to the small little door. He held his breath tightly and finally he pulled and looked down on a room where no humans Ruled. Did I, did I screw that up? Oh, that's right. One with dust bunnies, bouncing and real fireflies. Blocks from old castles and bubbling mud pies. He gasped as he took in the rough rocky bed where a little monster stared back, eyes glowing and red. See, and there's the monster. He's really scared now. He's like, what's going on here? With a squeak, he was up. Blankets over his head, swearing to forget the door under the bed. Yeah, I doubt it. The little monster blinked his eyes wide. The door in the ceiling had shown a surprise. He was startled awake upon hearing a squeak. Scared but excited, he just had to peek. He couldn't believe what the door was revealing. A young human boy looking down from the ceiling. The door had slammed shut just as quick as it opened. The monster had gotten so much more than he'd hoped. And the very next evening, he lay quite awake. His small furry body would tremble and shake. With nervous excitement, he counted each hour till he knew it was safe to climb to the tower. Of wonder and adventure, a world to explore. He just had to reach up and open the door. And finally he did. With one quick swing, he found himself staring at the most wonderful things. Probably an Xbox. He saw little trucks that had people inside. That'd be terrifying. He saw blocks of odd shapes and a horse you could ride. Still terrifying. A rocket that might take you up to the moon. And then he looked up at the bed in the room. A little boy lay huddled, shaking with dread, as he stared at the monster from under his bed. The monster was quick to jump back through the door. He heard it shut tight as he dropped to the floor. Scrambling quickly back under the covers, he couldn't stop thinking about what he'd discovered. The little human did quite the same. He laid there and shivered, and then the grin came. He did see the monster. It wasn't all in his head. He did see a monster who was under the bed. With one long deep breath, he made up his mind. He was going back under to see what he'd find. So on his belly, under the bed he did creep to finally come close to the monster down deep. See in there, they're, they're locking eyes. There's the little truck with the little man in it. If you were a monster that didn't know what this stuff was, that would be terrifying, I feel like. Gulliver's Travels. The little monster lay shaken, but so giggly too. He knew all the stories of humans weren't true. 
He didn't see anything scary or mean, just a room with great toys and new things to be seen. So with new determination for that door to enter that room and truly explore. He knew the boy might be waiting, but he just didn't care. Maybe he could find something that they each could share. Neither boy could know what the other would do. With a push and a shove, suddenly they were through. One was going up, the other wanted to go down. But they both bumped their heads and sat back down with a frown. They looked to each other, eyes wide and shy. They reached out a hand, not knowing quite why. But they didn't think twice as they reached out as one knowing inside a new friendship was born. They're shaking hands, they're becoming besties, they're gonna probably go on a lot of fun uh, Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn adventures. Oh, that's it. And blackout. Anyways, that's Yellow Socks for Purple Monsters, written by uh, Teresa Hine, illustrations by Aaron Roth. If you guys want to pick this up, I highly recommend it. It's really great. It's a fan of me and the show and anti Conjurer story time. I wanted to give some support back to you guys for giving support to me for this. So check out in the description below the links and further information how you can find out more about this book and other books she's written. Want to give a big shout out and a thank you to Teresa for sending this book in. If you guys want me to read any of your books, just drop me an email, info at dansperry.com. Drop some recommendations in the comments below. I try and do the best I can to read them and check them out. And until next time, guten Nacht, children.